Hi, and welcome to my new series, Journey to Journeyman. I'm restoring my father's 1974 Alice Chalmers 310 lawn tractor, and there are several parts I have to make on a lathe. So I got my father's Atlas 618 lathe and restored it, and that'll be the star of the show. But during my restoration of this lathe and all the research I did, I found out that I've fallen in love with the machine trade and hence my journey to becoming a journeyman on it. The only formal education I've had on uh, lathes and machine tools was in high school and that was back in 78 through 81 so it's pretty much that stuff is gone so this will be a from the ground up <laughs> learning process for me. So if there are some true journeymen out there uh, that have construct, uh, constructive criticism or tips and tricks please don't hesitate to leave uh, comments. Um, my sister saw this machine in real life af after the restoration and she thought it looked smaller than it did on YouTube and it does because a lot of the shots I'm going to be uh, doing close-up shots of the work. It's got a 6 inch swing and that's where the 6 on the 618 is and it's got an 18 inch uh, between centers. So let's take a closer look at the star of the show, the Atlas 618. And here's the star of the show, the restored Atlas 618, minus the badging, I still have to restore that and get it on there. Anyway, it comes, I have a six jaw chuck now, I still am working on getting this tweaked out so there's no wobble in it, but I've got a six jaw, a three jaw chuck, four jaw and a face plate, also have a draw bar with collets and a milling attachment a steady rest and a following rest. So I have right now a sewing machine motor on there and the reason it's so raggedy in the paint job is because I anticipated that that would be on the back side but it's not it's on the front side so I just slapped some paint on there so it matched and also I was gonna undermount that and I haven't been able to do that yet figure that out yet so the way the sewing machine uh, motor works is there's an on off switch so when I turn it on I can dial this dial back here that gives the maximum RPM and this is how I give it the RPM is I'll lift up this thing and now you see this is all the way up and this is the as fast as it will go because I've got it on a very this switch back here which I can't show it can't fit the camera back there but when I kick this switch up to a higher gear when I bring this up really sings so that's basically what I do is find an RPM and then I just use this here bring it up to the RPM I want and that's the the variable speed on it um, anyway that's the 618 that will be starring in my journey to journeyman well, my goal is to become a proficient hobby machinist. I want to show you the good, the bad, and the ugly on my journey to become a journeyman. Um, I'm going to start off by making some parts for my tractor restoration, and then some parts for this um, blade, just a couple of parts for that. And then I hope to make some of the cool things that I've seen some of the guys make on their YouTube videos. Um, there are some really excellent resources for me right now. I almost study these guys like I'm going to school. There are guys out there with big machines um, like Keith Finner, Keith Rucker, Tom at Ox Tools, Adam at A-Bomb 79. These guys have huge, huge machines and they're doing this for a living. And I've learned a lot from them. And then there are some guys with some uh, more smaller lays like a normal person would have in their house like the, the 9, 10 inch lays. And that would be like uh, Mr. Pete 222, which is Tubal Cane, uh, Tom's Techniques, and Double Boost. Those guys have machines that like a regular guy could have. And then you got these guys out there that have the small machines like Baseline 46 and Myford Boy. And they make the coolest things with these small lays like this. So I'm hoping also to, to do that. And that's my goal, and I hope you'll join me on my journey to Journeyman. Well, here's what I'm going to attempt to make today. I've got some hex stock. I bought this on 
speedy metals and um, it's hex and it's an inch and a quarter what I'm going to try to do is make a uh, thing that goes on here that protects the threads when I use the collet just messing around see if I can make this lathe do a little work so this would be the first actual attempt at making a working project okay that's running pretty raggedy so I'm going to see if I can face both ends and clean this thing up Okay, my uh, drill depth is not good enough for that, so I need to slide this up some. So I'll loosen this up and slide it up a little bit. Well guys, I am so excited. Uh, what I found out about this boring bar, I've been rubbing metal for two days. I couldn't get it to cut and I finally just started messing around and figured out what makes it cut on my lathe. Number one is the center line. I had this on center line and flat. But with this kind of boring bar, what I found out is if I, I tried tipping it up, tipping it down. For me, what has worked is tipping it down. So having the, the blade down on an angle and then raising the whole thing up to center height and it cuts like butter I'll show that in a second and what I'm trying to do now is do a one inch by uh, ten threads per inch hole I can't find online where to get that and I don't have a Bible for uh, machinist Bible so I'm gonna get it close um, I've seen anything I'll show the numbers here in a second but I'm gonna just start boring it out close and once I get close I'm gonna try to find a specific number because I have a tap a tap for the one TPI okay I don't know how scientific this is but I can't find anything online for uh, one inch 10 TPI so what I'm gonna do is measure the inside of this and see what this is and then try to get the hole close to this to do the tapping and it's showing Oh, about 800, 870 thousandths. So, I'll start there. Maybe I'll make it 860. So 
So I'll start with boring out the 860. Time to measure. 682 thousandths, so I got uh, quite a bit more to go. Guys, the finish on this is incredible. I'm so, I'm so unbelievably shocked that this is working. Anyway, the next thing I'm going to tap this thing out. I think I got it to the right size or close. So I'll start putting the tap in here and uh, see if we can tap out this uh, this hole. Okay, what I've done is I put a, a live center in here, and that hopefully will keep that thing centered up. I'll stick this into back gear so that'll lock the spindle and uh, see if we can cut some threads here. Crescent wrench in one hand and keep, a, keep this center tight on the other hand. Yeah, here we go. feels too tight I'll take it out and I don't want to break this tap this tap was very expensive so I might have to open that up just a little bit more it's cutting threads um, but I'm gonna open that up just a tad bit more well, boys and girls, this is what you call <laughs> scrap metal. I uh, went online and looked it up again to see if I could figure out what size to drill it. And uh, I mean to ream it. And uh, as you can see, I reamed it too much. So I got to start all over again. Well, it's been fun. It's a learning process. And... Uh, so this is the first part that I made on the lathe, which is a fail. Anywho's, <laughs> we'll try it again. I looked it up on the internet and it goes national course, which is one inch by 18, is a seven eighths hole that you should drill. And then they showed a national fine, which is one inch by 14, which is 15 sixteenths, which turns out to 93.75. And so, Anywhere between those two, I thought since it's 10 inches, why don't we, that's 30, you know, 31 thousandths. So I said, why don't we add 30 thousandths pretty much. So my target was 900 thousandths on the hole the second time around, the first time I really screwed it up. But I got 896 thousandths. Stop right there.
Well, and there we go. The finished product there. Cut a little relief on the back to fit it onto the spindle. So when I put the collet in, that's a thread protector. Pretty cool, huh? I'm pretty excited here. I got my first project done. Uh, it's a thread protector for the when I use a collet on the lathe. Started off with a one foot bar of hex stock. I think it's an inch and a quarter. And I cut it, screwed this piece up because I drilled a hole too big. Uh, I was so used to using smaller taps that when I when I used this big tap and I felt a lot of resistance, well it's gonna give a lot of resistance. So I actually made that to where it just slides right over because I opened it up too much. So measure twice, cut once, goes with this as well. So I made a second piece, works like a champ. Also, when you're working with a one inch tap like that, it takes a lot of mechanical advantage. I had to use this big old crescent wrench, a regular one, just didn't give me enough leverage on there to get this one inch tap down through there. But the thread's tapped up nice, it fits on there nicely. Also folks, I must have somehow, when threading that or doing something on this project, I broke two of the teeth, the back gear and the bull gear. I don't know how I broke that tooth off of this bull gear. And then this one off of here. So I, I wish I knew how I did it because I don't want to do it again, but I'm going to have to buy a new bull gear, a new back gear, put that on there. And uh, so it costs me time. Uh, most of all, it's going to cost me money, but mainly it's going to cost me time having to put that stuff back on. Also, on that hole, I am so happy I was able to get the hole to work. Uh, what was going on with the other is when I'd run the boring bar into the hole, it would just rub. And as it rubbed, the further it get, there was more flex in the tool, so it wasn't cutting, so there was more resistance. And it was basically making a cone, and a raggedy cone at that. But once I put that, um, that tip, like I said, I tilted it down on an angle and then brought the tip up the center line. Holy cow, did she start cutting. And that's what's got me so excited. I'm finally cutting instead of rubbing the metal off. And that's extremely exciting to a novice who's been, you know, rubbing metal since I've had my father's leg. I see now that it's operator error, which it normally is, but at least I know how to fix it. If I can get the correct tool angles and the correct uh, cut on the tools, this baby is a beautiful uh, cutting lathe. For those of you who watch the machinist YouTube videos, I'm sure you've seen that those machinists get packages from fans and other machinists and believe it or not on my very first episode somebody sent me a package I know what you're thinking how can that be possible I, I don't know maybe they watched the video faster than the speed of light and went back in time and gave this to me anyway I'm not gonna look the gift horse in their mouth the fan says dear Jaster 1963 I'm a huge fan of journey to journeyman so here is a tool and some cash let's see Sure enough, here's a tool. They sent a tool and cash. Six dollars and and thirty-eight cents. Let's get a close-up shot of that cash. So thank you very much to my Journey to Journeyman fan for the tool and the cash. And thank you for watching. And we'll see you on the next episode of Journey to Journeyman.